uh, start a new series called I am the I am Noah's Ark in a world still filled with sin. Mm -hmm. The world is filled with some craziness. Y'all hear anybody believe that? Yes, sir. Uh, can you believe some of the things with your eyes and your ears is hearing? How people can, can just walk up to people and just stab people, and how people just can walk up in your face and just lie. And how people can plot to lie against you. That's astonishing. How somebody uh, can still strap a bomb to them and walk in a mall. That's just beyond me. And we start to see this stuff uh, more frequently. And God is letting us know that uh, he is still knows art and the world still filled with sin. Uh, let me read my little intro right quick. The world is corrupt and full of evil. Everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay, sin is celebrated and laughed at. The world knows no limit and has no boundaries. The world seeks its own. The world slash sinners make fun of people who live righteously. Anybody experience yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. The world protects its own. And when caught, sin is masked with only God can judge me. Anybody heard that before? Yes. Okay. The world hates Jesus and anybody who is called and who calls himself a true Christian. Somebody say a true Christian. A true Christian. Christian. In the midst of all of this, God's people are, are who are called by his name is caught in the middle of this melee. The real sense of God has to endure and continually seek God's face. Somebody say, I will continue, I will continue to seek God's face, seek God's face. In, a crazy world. in a crazy world. Okay. Even in Noah's day, the world was corrupt and full of evil. And only one man, somebody say one man, one man. found grace in the sight of the Lord. The Lord has, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. The Lord has always provided a place for his people to run and get safety. Mm -hmm. God has always provided a place for his people to run and to get safety. Let me pray. Heavenly Lord and Father, I thank you and I praise you. I give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Genesis 6 and 8. Genesis 6 and 8. I am Noah's ark in a world still filled with sin. Genesis 6 and 8. But before, before, before you go to, uh, before you go to, just hold your finger at 6 and 8, go to 6 and 1. Let's, let's lay some foundation right here. Something that we know and we read before, a familiar passage, but I believe that God is uh, going to pull some nuggets out of this here. It says, and it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Notice them daughters again. Notice them women again, y'all. Remember we talked about the women. The devil don't want to kill the women. He don't want to kill, he don't want to, he don't want to do that. He want to put them on corners. He want to turn them out. He want them to be women on women. He want them to, he want all the men to use them. He want to hold them in captivity and bound and manless. That causes confusion. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. All right. He ain't mentioning them men. He, he, he said when men begin to multiply. So that lets you know there was more men than women back then. Mm -hmm. Right? Verse 2. Uh, that was sort of God saw. The, I mean, and, and that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were what? Okay. Fair. And they took them wives of all that they chose. They didn't even ask. Right? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were old, these demons, spirits. Men of renown, these are devils and demons that cohabitated through and they created giants and they created hybrid beings. Okay? That is breaking that down. Verse 5. And God saw, the, saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Everybody say that word continually. Mm -hmm. Kind of like sound like today, don't it? 
Yeah. Verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his mind, right. in his foot, right. in his back, right. in his heart. Okay? Watch this here. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and creeping things, and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I had made them. Here's my test. But Ray found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Do you see that? But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. When we repeat that, put your name there. Ready? One, two, three. But Ray found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, let's say it one more time. Let's let this sink in. One, two, three. But Ray found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Y'all see that? Watch this here. This is an amazing passage. You have to put your name there. Because God is the same yesterday and the day before, right? right? He's present. He was back there, but he's present. In the midst of, of all that was going on, out of all the people of Noah's day, only Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. His children have, must have been jacked up. Y'all see this? He only said one man found grace. So where does that leave his children? We saw this somewhere before in the book of Job. Because the Bible says in the land of, uh, of uh, I think it was uh, uh, Ah, Nah, something like that. Ah, something like that. Nah, yeah. It was only one man. It was only one man that was righteous and that was Job. So that suggests to me that his kids were jacked. Y'all see that? So we find this in two places. Okay? Watch this here. Because the Lord didn't say anything about them being perfect or just or righteous. Let's read a little bit further. Verse 9. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Y'all see that? He walked with him. So that means to me that in his generation, you, you got to think about this. A generation, God only saw one man that was just and perfect and righteous. That alone ought to make us fear and tremble on who we think we are. Because there was a lot of people back in those days just like now or saying that I'm me and God is tight <laughs> me and God is alright it's you brother Ray that's jacked up <laughs> you got the problem you see this so just imagine if you have all these different people thinking and looking at you crazy and you're trying to tell them or God is trying to tell them in this generation I only see one man that I approve of, how many sneers you getting ready to get? Don't you think he got the same thing? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to make it clear. First Peter 3 and 12. Keep your, keep your finger on uh, Genesis, because that's what we're going to be focusing. Keep your finger on Genesis. First Peter. First Peter 3 and 12. We're going we to support this with, with uh, Scripture, because everything must parallel, right? Everything was parallel. So, in here, in, in 1 Peter 3, 12, uh, when I get there, watch this here, 1 Peter 3, 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the church folk. The righteous. Well, people who go to church. The righteous. Well, people who go to the club and then go to the church. Because they have all the opinion, right? The righteous. The righteous. The eyes of the Lord are over, hovering, looking, overseeing the righteous. And his ears are on their what? Prayers. Uh-huh. But the face of the 
the Lord is against them who do what? Evil. Mm -hmm. So that's why I asked you to place your name in. Because we have found grace. How did we find grace? Because Jesus went to the cross and we were, when his spirit quickened our spirit, we agreed with his spirit that we was in need of him. So we instantaneously found grace. Did that make sense? Okay. Okay. Watch this here. You have some family members that heard the same thing, but they ain't, they, 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 they not serving God. You heed the call. So therefore you have found grace because when he announced his call, you responded. Mm -hmm. That's where grace come in. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Amazing grace, how sweet the sun that saved the ranch. See, everybody can sing that, but everybody can't, can't, can't comprehend the revelation of that. So thank God that we have. Mm -hmm. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Over the righteous. Over the righteous. Over the righteous. But that suggests to me in this world of sin, and what's going on, his eyes is still over us. So nothing can't come and harm us unless God begins to look another way. Okay? Unless we begin to take our eyes off of him. Because if his eyes is over us, then our eyes should be on him. So when we take our eyes off of him, we lose sight of who he is. So we fall into the ways and the thinking of the world. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Okay, let's go back to Genesis. We'll go back to Genesis 6. That's that. We're, going to, we're going to walk down this thing. We're going to walk down this thing. The Lord's ark, his ark, Noah's ark, is, 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 is the sin. I mean, it's still a refuge for us in this world. Verse, watch this here. Verse 9. Verse 9. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in generation, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Sham, Ham, and Jethro. Now we can tear that thing down, but that's for a whole nother, a whole nother subject. He was a just man. Why was he a just man and righteous? He found grace because he, he responded to God's uh, heart when he called. But he found he, he was a just man and he was righteous for one reason and one reason alone. He obeyed God. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. He obeyed God. Question. What did God ask you to build and offer for him? What would you do? Would you do it without murdering and whining? Or would you put it off? Think. Think. Don't be smart. Because if you be smart, God's laws is going to judge you. But if you think, you have to think your way into, in, 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 into accepting God because it's your choice. Mm -hmm. Even though he helps you, he reveals himself to you, you still have to think if this is what I want because you have the choice to accept it or reject it. So you have to think Smart people out try to smart God. They say it like this here. I'll do it tomorrow. You see? I got time. Or he don't mean it that way. But people who think, they think about who God is. Though they don't have the full scope on who God is, uh, they got enough to know that they need to respond to that call because they may not get that opportunity again. So they respond while they're thinking. They don't know that they're, they're working in unison with the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that revealed it to them. But you still have to come to them with your mouth. Yes. Do that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if God was to ask us to build an ark for him, will we build it? Will we build him an ark? It's something to think about. Because right now we, 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 we see a lot of people building things. Building things. They're building big churches, big Ephesus. But the Bible says that Jesus said that these buildings in Ephesus is going to be torn down and not one stone is going to be laid on top of the other. Because you know why? They build him an ark. But the ark 
is uh, they build they build him an ark which they call the church but God is not in the church because they put too much emphasis on the beautification of the church instead of letting the beautification of Christ be in their heart be glorified so that's why he said not one stone not one stone have you ever had have you, have you ever said this here at my church we do this at my church we do that be real careful because not realizing we're talking about a physical building, but Jesus declared that you are the church. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Because Noah found grace and righteous and was righteous before the Lord. This meaning was this. He had right standings with the Lord. Instantaneously, it qualified his family to go into the ark. Do you see what one man's righteousness can do? Yeah. Do you see what one woman's obedience can do? Yeah. It can cause a whole family to go into the ark. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Even though they have to stand before God themselves, you, our obedience can draw a family. It covers them until they have enough sense for themselves to realize that God is good. That makes sense? Let's back this up with scripture. Let's go to Acts 2.39. Acts 2.39. Because of Noah's faithfulness and because Noah obeyed God, it qualified for him and his family to enter into the ark. He walked with God. How many of us walk with God? Or do we get ahead of God? Or do we walk beside God? We can't walk beside him, y'all. We can't walk ahead of him. We walk behind him. And then he allow us through relationship to walk on the side of him. You see how that work? His disciples always walk behind him. But when he wanted to convey something to them. They walk on side of him, but yet behind him. Okay, I give you an example. Come here, please. Hurry up. Come here, please. See, if, if I was talking with Felicia and I'm Jesus, I'm talking, they're listening. But when I wanted to convey something to him, I stop and they right here. Amen. Now after I'm done talking, she bags up. No, you're wrong. <laughs> and then the master keeps because he, he leads us into green pasture he is the good shepherd do you see what I'm saying now now, with, now for married people Jesus still leads us and we still follow because he just don't see me he sees the both of us right so in the Lord's eye her opinion is just as valid as mine. But simultaneously, if the Lord wanted to tell us something, he halts her and tell me. And if he wants to tell her something, he halts me and, and tell her to catch up. You see how this thing works? But if God chooses to speak, he's going to speak to both of us. Right. For single folk, we always going to follow. But when the Lord wants to convey something to us, he stops and we come on the side of him. And he leads us. And then when, he, when we get the message, we fall back and we follow. Amen. Do, that, do that make sense? Amen. Watch this here. This is, this is for anybody who chooses to obey God. And you find grace, you are declared just and perfect and righteous for the, for the, uh, for the cross sake. Watch this here. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as the Lord our God shall call. One person can cause the whole family to be saved. Mm -hmm. And as many as God whom he chooses. Do you, do this make, isn't that good? Yeah. yeah, that's good. Because you may have everybody out there in your family say, but you may have a homegirl that you hadn't seen from high school. Mm -hmm. You may have a homeboy that, that, that you hadn't seen in years, and God said, I'm going to call them too. They, they are far from you, but I'm going to call them. Yeah. 
as the Lord shall call because of one man and, and it's all tied into one thing obedience obedience this is a strong warning to us today you mean to tell me out of thousands or maybe millions of people on the earth at that time only one man can draw his whole family mm -hmm. into an ark. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about that. That makes me want to get saved all over again. Because mm -hmm. I know, I know it probably somebody out there that got a closer wall yeah. with God than what I have. Yeah. So I couldn't dare say, well, that's me. Y'all need to catch up. No. No. No, because you can take the average child mm -hmm. and the average child's heart is connected to God that most of us grow up for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah. So this means that out of all the children that was even back in those days, in his generation, mm -hmm. he was top dog in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. So the children was jacked. Yeah. That's something. That's something. Watch this here. That suggests to me that all these people had to be full of themselves instead of sure of themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't we see that today? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew uh, 24 and 37. Matthew 24 and 37. Let's see. This was so important that Jesus had to mention this in the New Testament. This was so important. But before we go there, watch this. Let me read something to you. If one man found grace, then what is God trying to tell us? Reiterate. Let us work out our own plan of salvation in fear and in trembling. Don't look at somebody else's pride or somebody busting up in the club or somebody stripping or somebody doing what they do and place our righteousness above them. We're supposed to be praying for them. When Noah was out there proclaiming that call. I can almost see tears in his eyes because these people were sneering and laughing and this and that, but they never had a thought about what was to come. When we see people out there doing that thing, we need to have a heart that we pray to God that they can see what is to come. Because if those folks cry out to God while we're sneering and laughing at them, God will make them first and we will be last. Right. See how this works? Okay. It says, uh, it says, uh, uh, Matthew uh, 24 and 37. It says, let's go to 36 first. But of that day and hour, no man know it. Not the angel, neither the angels in heaven, only but Ray. Father. Only the priest. Father. Well, grandma talked about that years ago. Father. So she got no son. It says, but of that day and hour, no, no man know it. Not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the day of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were what? Eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Do y'all see that? It was so important. Jesus was so smart that he saw today in Noah's day. Mm -hmm. That he had to mention that the same thing what you're seeing now, these people is going to be doing the exact same thing. The question is, where are we in this? Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? 
So we have to be, we have to be sure of ourselves. We put no confidence in the flesh. We put zero confidence in the flesh. This flesh will never yield itself to God. It is impossible for my flesh to say, I'm going to obey God. I have to beat this flesh to make it do what it don't want to do. Okay, let's go to Philippians. Keep your hand on Matthew. Let's go to Philippians uh, 3 and 1. Philippians 3 and 1. You have to know, you have to know how to keep that flesh under control. Philippians 3 and 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Watch this here. Be aware of dogs. Be aware of evil workers. Be aware of concision. Verse 3. Verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship who? God. In the spirit. And rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. In the flesh. Do y'all see that? We, we worship God in the spirit. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And we rejoice in Christ. And we have no confidence. That's why these praise and worship songs is all about Him. Mm -hmm. it, it, if it messes with your flesh, good. Right. <laughs> because that's, that is showing what your diet is used to. But it's a good thing if you can hang in there because it's all about Christ. If it's your birthday, you don't want nobody to mention me. <laughs> Do you see? Mm -hmm. it, it, oh. If it's your birthday, if it's all about you, you're going to have a childlike attitude. If somebody say, uh, uh, mention you and bring you to the front, though you got hundreds of people looking at you, you're going to feel some kind of way about some, by somebody mentioning your name because it's all about you. This is all about Jesus, right? Amen. So we come with the emphasis about Jesus. We worship him in, in the Lord. I mean, worship him in spirit. So therefore, it cancels out the flesh because the flesh wants to war against the spirit. Does that make sense? Amen. Okay, okay. Uh, Matthew 4 and 4. Matthew 4 and 4. We, 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 let, let's, see what, let's see what Jesus did about this here. Matthew 4 and 4. This is, you, you, we, we, got to, we got to get on the ark. We got to stay on the ark. Matthew 4 and 4. Watch this here. Watch this here. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the preacher. Right. Out of the mouth of grandma. Because right. grandma said he's going to be a preacher. God. Grandma said you're going to be a great architect God. and preach for the Lord. God. It says God. Right? Mm -hmm. Every word. Let me break this thing down right quick. This, what this, this is what I believe what this means. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. These folks are living out of their bellies. Meaning, they are appetite driven. They eat or ate earthly food instead of bread. Any and everything moves them. Do you see what I'm saying? Do I need to break this down? They live out of their bellies, meaning, meaning that the moment that they get hungry or feel hungry, they go eat something. They never consider the word of God because they're appetite driven. I got to go over here and hear this. I got to go see this person. Appetite driven. Oh, we're getting this. Okay, okay, okay. Watch this here. You just can't read your Bible. You have to hear every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That means you got to read it and 
and shut up and let God word come off the pages and speak to your heart, your spirit mm -hmm. to give you revelation on what you just read because you can read God's word and one, you can totally forget about what you just read or you can read it and you can come up with something that you think what it means instead of allowing God to speak what it means. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, let's go a little deeper than this. Let's go a little deeper. Uh, uh, Noah, uh, Noah building the ark was the platform God used to warn the people a flood was coming. He didn't get up there and preach. He just got him some ha a hammer and some nails. That was the platform. Amen. Yeah. See, sometimes, see, 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 sometimes we don't have to, we don't have to do a lot like the enemy suggests that we have to. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is just read what God's word says, meditate on it, and wait for God to speak to us. Concerning what it means, because I know in my lifetime I used to read the word and I thought it meant this, but somebody came back and told me, no, 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 this means that. So I had to learn that it came out of the mouth of God through something I perceived that was right, but it was wrong, because this is what I read. I didn't meditate on it. I only read what I wanted to read, and I got my I drew my conclusion out, and God is saying, no, let me send somebody to you to give you what I say about that word. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So Noah building the ark was the platform God used to warn the people a flood was coming. God uses the fivefold ministry, preachers, pastors, prophets, evangelists, apostles, to warn his people that Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. Philippians 2 and 12. Philippians 2 and 12. You have, to, you have to see the word of God for how the Holy Spirit wants to give it to you. Watch this here. Where to my beloved, and he have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. In fear and in trembling. Fear of what? That you don't become like the world. You, you can't judge the world but by, 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 by your standards because you're too busy working out your plan how you're going to stay unspotted. Now watch this here, y'all. I know how black folks and, 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 and some of the traditions that we all come out of. We all come out of those traditions to where this kind of stuff is boring because it's not moving flesh. This stuff don't mean really nothing to because we're used to people falling out, passing out, and running around and, and doing all those old crazies. It takes discipline to sit down and hear the word of God. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Not falling out and running around. Amen. Not break dancing and, 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 and running down the aisles doing somersaults. <laughs> Not the sissies beating the tambourines. Right. Not the preacher on, saying what the people want to hear. Come on. It takes discipline to sit down and listen to somebody tell you about what God thinks about you. Right, right, amen. I don't, I didn't like it. Do you see what I'm saying? But I found that it was beneficial. Amen. That's right. Because the things that we deal with out there is going to come against everything what we stand for and believe in. Yes, right. As we speak, there's a devil out there trying to form and cook up something to try to come against what we believe. That's right, right, right. That's what a thief does. That's what the enemy does. He never does things in your sight. He comes in your sight after you ever had met somebody. Where you been? Oh, I was just over there. Well, what, what, what you was over there doing? I just saw you. You're gone. When he was up, it was up to something. 
You just, it just hadn't been revealed. That's why I said earlier before serving, it's amazing how the devil can do some genius things in the beginning. But when it's unveiled and it comes into the light, it is so stupid and people buy it. Mm -hmm. People, people just buy it. It's just, it's just weird. So when you look at the times of, uh, of, of the days of Noah, Jesus thought that it was so important, something back then in Genesis, he had to stick it over here in Matthew, and you can also find it over here in Luke. It was just that important. That lets you know that when we read about Genesis, you're reading about what's going on today. And sometimes if you read it real carefully, it, it will really have to make you stop and just pause and start thinking about some of the events that's going on. You're like, wow, this happened back then. So it was suicide bombers now. It had to be some suicide bombers back then. Because the Bible says it's nothing new up under the sun. Right. But you mean to tell me in the midst of all that, that God only still found one? What? In his generation. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Lord is. Wait a minute. So that suggests to me, it's too many people that love God today and that's walking with God today. So when you break generation down now, you know what he's talking about? Your lineage. He said Ham, Sham, and Jack. But in that time, because he was perfect in that generation, he was speaking about a whole. But in our generation, it's talking about how God has shed his love on us, that he pulled us out of our generation. Mm -hmm. Don't, 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 you don't, 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 don't get it tomorrow. Listen to what I'm saying. You have brothers, uncles, cousins, grandmas, granddad, here and not here. That's still your generation. Mm -hmm. So he called you just perfect, righteous in your generation. You don't have to think that far to think that they know that somebody in your family is not serving God. So he, he called you just and righteous and perfect in your generation. You come from somebody. You come from mama, uh, daddy. They came from mama, daddy, mama, daddy, mama. You, so what brought you up to right here? So when you heard the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you responded, then that became, then you, uh, you became right then and there just before God, righteous before God, sanctified before God. Hold it before God in your generation. Okay? So you don't believe me? How many people in your family say it? You can name five of them. <laughs> they say they love God. But we go by what? Fruits. Because you shall know them by their what? Fruits. Now, y'all up in here going to the club, it'll be revealed because it's too small. And we're gonna see that, we're gonna see that real quick. You sitting there looking in front of me, but in your heart, you getting jiggy with it. <laughs> okay, okay, watch this here. What y'all? Huh? Watch this here. Watch this here. If I was up here preaching, and you knew that I was just this fly type guy, you know, I'm just fly all the time. I just always got, I'm one of them preachers, always got something going. You're gonna look past this message. You gonna be like, that dude can preach, but however. Y'all see what I'm saying? You won't be able to look past that. Okay? Uh, Mark 4, 24. In this, in this time, Noah also took heed to what he was hearing. So in Mark 4, 24, Jesus had something to say about that. He said unto them, Take heed what you wear. Hear. Take heed what you think. Yeah. He said, take heed what you hear. Watch this here. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. In other words, whatever re revelation that you get from somebody else, it's going to come back to you. Okay? If you're, all of our influences came from our mother or auntie, whoever raised you, that was your influence because it's 
coming back to you. That's why we fight so hard to get away from it. So if you're sitting up under this ministry, it's coming back to you. That's why it's imperative that we put our eyes on the word of God for ourselves. So when we go out there and the life applications rise up in our life, the word will come back to you. Do that make sense? Yeah. So, so, so he said, take heed. So that's why we're real careful about the different type of ministries and the conferences and the people that you go out, that you hang out with. Do this make sense? Because when you do this, whatever, whatever spirit that that preacher or evangelist or those people have in that church is coming back to you. Yes. Amen. You don't, they don't even have to mention. Okay, let's just say this is, that's, we all pack up and we go to Dr. Jim's church and we sit there and we listen. It's going to come back to us. Only thing pretty much he talked about is deliverance. So whatever what word is being spoken, though we may not go through no deliverance right then and there, when the time arises, that word is going to come right back. Do you see? So the same as if, if we're, you know how sometimes you can't go over to your folks out there, you know how they're going to get it started, and you decide you ain't going over there, and then when you go over there, you turn around and you get into it, and then you turn around and say, God, God I knew I shouldn't have went over there, because it's coming back to you. Do that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's why he said, take heed what you hear, for what measures, it's given out in measures, y'all. It don't all come back at one time. It's here and it's there. It's measured on how long you stay up in it. It shall be measured to you. Watch this here. And unto you that hear shall more be given. That means that the moment, if you keep hearing the word of God, if you keep sitting up under the uh, right ministry, you're going to increase more. Just as much as you stay up under a nut, you're going to increase more. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Being enough. Do y'all do y'all see this? Yes, Noah Noah was able Noah was able to uh let me get my phone for me. Noah was able to to uh sustain or have longevity more so more so than a lot of these people because he had a heart. He had a heart. To, to want to stay in the presence of God. Do this make sense? Now, let's look at some nuggets we can draw from Noah's life when we get on out of here. Let's look at some nuggets. We see in, in Genesis 6 and 8, Noah found grace. He found grace, right? He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, Noah chose to live right in a corrupt world. He did not allow himself to become entangled. Somebody say entangled. Entangled. By the world, the flesh, and the devil. This is amazing. Like I said, because in the midst of all that was going on, all of you in Noah's day, Noah found grace in his generation. That means that in your household, you need to make sure that you are continually following God so you can stay perfect, so you can stay righteous. Watch this here, y'all. If you mess up, just repent, and only God see he was he will restore you back to the original state. Yes, <clears throat> Do you see? Yep. When we mess up, we have somewhere where we can go. The world has to let time heal them. Yes. We let God heal us among the saints. Mm -hmm. That's our ark among the saints in the church. Mm -hmm. Okay? Watch this here. The next thing that we find that uh, that Noah that uh, Noah did, he didn't have no confidence in the flesh. Don't put no confidence in your flesh. Get the, get that hammer and those nails, and you keep knocking. Don't allow the people to tell you there ain't no rain coming. Don't you allow people to tell you that what you doing that for? You know you used to be a crackhead. Well, yeah, but I'm still nailed. <laughs> you know you ate bath salt, but yeah, I, I, well, yeah, I once did. But but that's what I once was. But I'm still nailed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's these, these are the things that we can learn. And, and another thing that Noah did, Noah didn't depend on people. He, he had basic instructions from God and he went to work. Do y'all see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. We see another thing that uh, Noah did. Noah did. You can just write these scriptures down. Uh, 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 the second thing he did, it was in Genesis 6 and 14. Basic instruction. Find the will of God for your life and just do it. Noah was able to find the will of God that kept him from going to the world for advice. Do you see? Question. What has God called you to do? Because if you don't have an assignment and a mandate, you're just a, a, a step away from the devil finding something in your appetite, in your diet. You have to find. You, Jesus out there in the wilderness, he was not appetite driven. He was spirit driven. The devil tried to capitalize on his hunger. Do you see what I'm saying? He tried to capitalize on his hunger pain. Jesus didn't fall for that because he fasted because he knew what his purpose was. His purpose was to leave glory, come down here, die for humanity, and then go back. He had a purpose. You have to know what your purpose is. Do, 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 you, do you see what I'm saying? Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, when you know what your purpose is, it keeps you unspotted from the world. Go to James 1.27. It keeps you unspotted. Doing the will of God keeps you unspotted from the world. Though the world will tempt you or try to tempt you or convince you that what you're doing is not God. If you hold fast, you would, you would not be tainted by the world. James 1 and 27, it says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fathers and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. See, he gave them a mission. They had a mission. They went to go visit the fatherless and they took care of the widows. And it kept them unspotted. That means that it didn't suggest that the devil wasn't going to try. It's just that they chose, they chose to stay in that land. And they didn't go to the bingo hall and try to convince the old people that it's all right to play bingo. They went to visit the fatherless and the widows. So they had a, a call that God has given them. They didn't decide to go be evangelists. They didn't decide to go and, 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 and do something that other folks told them that, that they're good at because they had an event and they shined for a day or so. They stayed in their lane and it kept them unspotted. When you do the will of God for your life, then God will protect you. Because the devil is going to come, the devil is going to only come at you with the things that you are familiar with. I don't desire big women, so he's not going to put big women in my path. Though he'll send one, but he know that's just that's just not okay. Have you ever had a bad hamburger? All you had to do was say, "Wait, this ain't going to work." <laughs> What do they do? They give you what you want. You gotta give them what they ask for. You you you, you give them you 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 <laughs> you got you you got to know what your calling is. You got to know. You got to know. This this help keep you from being unspotted because it said pure religion and undefiled before God. And the Father is this. That means that he gave them an assignment. They knew what their purpose was. Do you see? And in the midst of doing their purpose, the devil would try to come, but it, it's, they, they unspotted. They can see the enemy. Because what is the enemy going to do in an old folks' home or you evangelizing out there in the park that God will allow you to see? Does this make sense? 
You can be able to see the enemy at your crusade. You can see the enemy trying to come against you when you're in your land. Right, right. You, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's when we're outside doing everything that we want to do that you cannot see the enemy. But when you're in your calling, in your purpose, you can see the enemy out there doing, doing some wild stuff out there. Yeah. Now, uh, Noah was able to see it. Amen. He was able to see it. Another thing. Another thing that uh, that Noah was able to see, he was able to, uh, he understood the difference between male and female. Now we got to read this here. He understood the difference between male and female. If you ever had the gay issue come up, just take it right over here. For this is very, this is a scripture that people very seldom read. And God made it clear. Somebody say God made it clear. God made it clear. Okay. Ver uh, Genesis 6 and 19. Noah was sure about his calling. He was building an ark. The ark was doing the preaching. He wasn't. If God calls you to do something, you're just the vessel. You let God speak. What is our motto at this church? Sit down, shut up, because you ain't got nothing to say. Did, did this make sense? Amen. The ark That was doing the talking. It drew the people. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Now the Lord was speaking. Get on the ark. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Alright. He understood the difference between male and female. So when you understand your assignment and you're unspotted from the world, you can spot the devil. Now check this out. Verse 19. Watch this here. And every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark. The church. To keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and what? Female. All right. Let's break this thing down. You know, if you ever have a problem, you don't have a wonder woman, because the homosexuals know about the woman's down. They are they, 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 they are dissected that. They done made Bibles and took right. that part out. Romans 1, 26 and all that, they done took that part out. So you go over here to Genesis, you back door them. <laughs> yeah, it's going out in TV land. Watch this here. Watch this here. Noah had a clear understanding when God said in verse 19, watch this here. And every living thing of all flesh, let's look at it. Let's look at this every living thing. What is the master saying? Boy, y'all have some great questions. This is what I believe. He is saying male and female together in Christ. Is a living thing. Come on, bud. Mm -hmm. That's good. Suitable, compatible to one another. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. The two have the right equipment that can generate electricity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not believe. That's God's prescribed order. Amen. That's right. Okay. And God said it was what? Good. <laughs> you can shut them down with that. Okay? Watch this here. They have a pass to get on the ark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch this here. Watch this here. But male on male and female on female, well, Houston, we got a problem. Yes, <laughs> because it's not in the word of God. He said male and what? And female. He told Noah to go get what? Male and female. Not two big, hairy, stank men who wear the same shoes. You can put that on there. Put it on there. <laughs> Watch this here. That goes against nature itself. Yes, it does. Okay? It stops God's original intent when he said, be fruitful and multiply. And it's nasty. Amen. Two big state men and women laying in the hay. Now you know Noah's going to have a problem with that. <laughs> but he walked by the old little room, makeshift room, and he looked at them rolling in the hay, or they laying up watching TV. He's going to look right in there and something's wrong with that. <laughs> Somebody say it's nasty. It's nasty. It's nasty. It's nasty. Two 
up every source. Watch this. Let's tell you the scripture now. Right. Watch this here. Watch this here. He's every little thing. And the next part he said, watch this here. He said, two of every sort shall thou bring into the into the ark. Two of every sort. <coughs> what that mean? You may have some transgenders trying to come in. And they're sitting in your church. Yeah. No. That means sort. That means you found them. Stop. Look at them. Sort them out. Oh, don't get this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They got some men out there looking just like women. You cannot tell y'all. Mm -hmm. You got some women. Bush. So he told him, go find them. Mm -hmm. Sort them out. Then let them come on the ark. Then. Okay. <laughs> Watch this here. Infeminate men and women in your church. Right? Mm -hmm. Hold up. Sort them out. Let me break this thing down. I'm not saying stop them from coming in. But what I am saying, you got to mark those. Because it's a spirit inside of them. And that spirit only see one thing. Is to stop the original intent of God. Amen. Male and female Amen. from procreating. Right. That will multiply and be fruitful. But be right. fruitful and multiply. Right. It comes against God's image. God is the groom. We are the what? Right. Now what do you like? I'm going up to God saying no, I'm running this. <laughs> I tried it, but it don't work. You tried it too, didn't you? Then you go to God and say, the uh, Lord said, I want this. And, and you said, no, I want, I want this. Your voice got harder than his. That's right. He's speaking a steel small. You trying to outdo it. I know it says this, this but you see this? Mm -hmm. So we all tried that. But, 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 but he said, through loving kindness, have I what? So that means that knowing your role. I brought you because I could have left you out there. But he sent somebody to pull us in, nasty, crazy, confused, the whole nine. But he sorted it out after a period of time. Where is your fruit? How are you progressing in me? Do you see? Okay, we get ready to close. We get ready right outside. Watch this here. <laughs> Watch this here. Watch this here. You know, when, when, when you look at how Noah was so focused, he was intended to obey God no matter what. Mm -hmm. Even people probably throwing eggs at him, y'all. They were probably throwing some, I would say chicken, but I, you know, the brothers gonna eat that chicken. We ain't gonna throw them, they throw some eggs, but we ain't gonna, we gonna eat that chicken. And, you know, this imagine people sneering at him. Talking about family members siding with the folks. Then he said, this is what's happening now. They're going to be eating, marrying, doing all this stuff. Don't you have some people in your family and friends doing the same thing? Don't you have some people in your family oppose uh, you for the God that you serve? That's why he said, just as in Noah's day, so shall it be right now. But we're going to learn some lessons from Noah. He was focused. He was focused. He was focused. Somebody say focus. Focus. You got to know what God has called you to do and you got to do it because this is what's going to help you stay unspotted from the world. It'll cut your TV time out too. Yeah. It'll cut some of that junk out too. It'll settle some of these crazy issues that we're going through because you have a purpose mm -hmm. and you're working it. And the more you work your purpose, you can see the enemy. You can see the enemy trying to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Yes. Do you see? The devil loves a picnic in our mess when we don't have no purpose. Mm -hmm. Verse uh, 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 Mark 4, 24. He said, take heed to what you hear. We read that. And with the message that you need, it shall be measured back to you. Whatever what I say is going to come back to you. Do you see that? Whatever I tell my wife is going to come back, vice versa. 
And this is, she don't even have to say nothing, but it's going to come back. Her, her response to me is going to be in essence of what I told her. Amen. And vice versa. Yeah. It's going to come back. Be careful on what you're listening to. YouTube has a plethora of stuff out there that sounds like God. You better open up this word. Yeah. Better open up this word. Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah 55 and 6. Noah was out there on the ark. It signified another thing that we can learn from Noah. Noah was hammering and nailing on the ark. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Mm -hmm. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let's break this down. The Lord is sending a clear message to the world and to his church. Seek me while I may be found. There's a lot of people think they really found God. There's a church going on right now that testimony service mm -hmm. is going on and these folks have really, really found the Lord Jesus. You just don't know where I was. I was so torn up. And mm -hmm, sit down, <laughs> shut up. You ain't got nothing to say because the devil loves to get in our tongue to try to perform through us by mentioning him, but we're getting all the shine. Y'all see that? That's why he says, seek me while I may be found. Watch this here. It's clear in the scripture that one day men will decide to seek him and he won't be found. Do y'all see that? That means that seek me while I may. So that it's going to come a time when men going to seek and he ain't going to be found. Right? And then he said, call for me while he is near. On the surface, y'all, it appeared that the Lord is nowhere around and especially when we're going through. But we have to remain focused and trust his word that when he said he is near, he is near. Yeah. Proverbs 18.10. We close it. Proverbs 18.10. We're talking about Noah. We're talking about the Lord saying, I am Noah's ark in a world still filled with sin. So what you see back in Noah's day is happening now and vice versa. Proverbs 18, 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is what? Safe. Question, where do we take refuge? Where do the saints of God run? Where do believers run to after the job, family, friends let us down? Where do we suppose to find shelter and rest and comfort? Where do we go to escape the world? Church. The ark represented God's church. He was trying to tell everybody to get on the ark. Come to church. Come to church. Hmm. If you want to find rest and comfort, the best place to run is church. That's where you'll find the Lord. Everybody's trying to find the Lord a Sunday morning, looking at TV at their favorite ministers. Mm -hmm. No. But say not the assemblies of yourselves together. Church, the ark. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Just like Noah and his family, they found safety, protection, shelter, rest, and comfort in the ark. We find strength, shelter, protection among each other. We fuel each other up. We worship God. We fuel each other up by edifying, by opening up the word, opening up the scriptures. We fuel each other, and then we go back out there as lamb among what? Y'all see this? Noah's name means rest and comfort. The church should be rest and comfort from what's going on out there. Amen. And, and a lot of us don't have to go too far because some of that crazy is in our home. That's why I'm a long way from home and I purposely did it that way. Purposely did it that way. I purposely got away from around nuts. Purposely got away from around people who can care less about your, about your God and still yet simultaneously say thank you Jesus. I purposely got away from people in my family. I don't know about your 
perfect family. That will sit there and, and, and say to you, Jesus, but hold you hostage to who you used to be. Right. Come on, God. <clears throat> you, better, uh, you better put them pants on. Watch this here. If you want to find rest and comfort, this is why we have church on Wednesdays and Sundays. The Wednesdays is a fueling station to get you to Sunday. Because we don't know what's going on and we, we can't predict what's going on because the devil's time is short and he's doing some nutty things right now. So we have to have that fill up, fill up, uh, uh, fill up, uh, uh, fill up in midweek service. Some churches have it on Tuesdays. Some churches have it on Wednesdays. Some churches have it on Thursdays. You, do, you see what I'm saying? So when you miss the house of God, just imagine the heat that you don't see that God is withstand that the enemy wants to come up on you. The devil played some real games this week, did but with his rain, did Oh, he did. As soon as we canceled, got home about an hour later, it stopped. Yep. And I've learned an important lesson. The Lord said, persevere. If they had your lot of money there, you would have walked in that rain in the church. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're pleasing the flesh. Anything that will keep us out of the house of God, oh, I'm down with that. But the moment that that devil is right there on your heels, I'm to get down. Do you see what I'm saying? Thank God that he he, he at the door saying, I'm you know, going back where you come from. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. Matthew 11, 29. When you come to church and you find rest and comfort, that's a mandate that the Lord wants us to do. That's a mandate that the Lord wants us to do. This is another nugget that we can find out of the life of Noah. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Now where are you going to find the rest? In the church. Did you see? You're going to find rest into the church. Let's see another reason why Noah's Ark is a place, or the church is where we're supposed to be in a crazy world. Acts 3.19. Acts 3.19. Verse 19. You come to the house of God because the Lord knows our flesh and the Lord knows our friend. So the Lord knows that we probably picked up some funkiness while we was out there, deliberately and intentionally. So the Lord said, look here, man, uh, come to the house and find rest to your soul. You're going to find it. I'm, I'm, I'm meek. I'm meek and lonely in heart. And you're going to find rest into your soul. But however, somebody say however. However. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, where are you going to find a time of refreshing from the presence of the Lord? On the ark, in the church. <clears throat> Last but not least, if you drop down to Genesis 6 and 22, this sums up Noah's whole life and which is your son of ours. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Y'all see that? Hmm. Hmm. Luke 12. Luke 12. Now this is interesting. This is really interesting. Noah did all that was according to the commands of God. So did he. Luke 12, 42. Luke 12, 42. This is a sure promise, y'all. And he said, and the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Send them 40 days out there on that water, 40 days, that was a due season out there. It came, to an, it came to an expected end, right? Okay. Watch what the Lord said. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, 
find shall, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. Do y'all see that? So when we obey God, when we obey God and we do what he says, then God will say, I'm going to give you much. I'm going to give you much, much more. I'm going to let you rule your house and it's going to be peace. It's going to be peace in your house. And it's going to be added peace. It's going to be added. The people that you, that you thought, thought wouldn't come in to serve me will come and serve me because of you. Now we can, you, we can continue to read the story about Noah. We know how Noah has some weaknesses. Don't we have some weaknesses? Yeah. But the Lord still said that Noah found grace was just and righteous before God. Don't you think God see our weakness? Yeah. But do that exclude God from blessing us? No. The weakness is a byproduct of God showing us on how much we need him. Do you see? And there are some things in our life, y'all, that we can cry out to God till the, till the cows come home. And there are some things that we can fast and we can cry, but it, it, it can be some things in our life that God has said, I'm going to keep that right there. Noah was a drunk. Noah slept with his daughters. Noah helped create that. The, 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 uh, 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 molestation in, in the home. Huh? Well, he did it too. He did it too. If you know, Noah slept with his dogs. Mm -hmm. Read the text. Read the text. Make sure you get you a, a concordance. Not a concordance, but I'm talking a, a, a concordance that can really go down and break these things down. And you can see the weaknesses. Every man of God just about had a weakness. We just hadn't seen Elijah's and Enoch's. But the Bible promises that when they come back, they're going to die. No man can just walk this earth and not die. If Jesus came and died, these two boys is coming back. They would be glad to lay that weakness or light down. Don't you think they know that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Don't you think God is aware of some of our weakness? And, all, and we are aware of some of our weakness? Yeah. And God is still merciful. <clears throat> the only danger that we have is when we hold on to that weakness and the Lord wants to progress us to another area of our life to say we need to get done with that so we can move forward. That's when we walk into the dangers when we hold on to. Because it becomes a snare. It stops you from doing what God has called you to do, Samson. Because he had always sent a delight. Who sent the lie? God. Who sent the flood? God. Yes, sir. Do you see what I'm saying? That was a weakness. He saw that the world was corrupt. Right? He said he was going to destroy everything over the face of the earth. Right? He said he was going to start new. Right? But he looked into your generation. And he called you. He said, I'm going to start it over with you. Amen. And the more that you obey me, I'm going to bring your cousins, I'm going to bring your sons, I'm going to bring your daughters, I'm going to bring all of them in. Do you see? I'm going to bring them in. And then I'm going to bring in some other people because of your faithfulness. But I still see your weakness. He covers it. Does it make sense? Alright, I'm done.